Do, 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 do. I'm coming in today. Hella calm, y'all. I just finished my meditation, my yoga. I'm, I'm zen the fuck out, y'all. But here's the song I want to sing to y'all. <laughs> Do you recognize that little tune at the beginning? It's, we having fun on this side. Whole lot of love on this side. Know you want to come on this side. I know you wanna hop on this ride We having fun on this side Whole lot of love on this side Know you wanna come on this side Know you wanna hop on this Let's go to the lake ooh, ooh. Y'all gotta listen to the song to hear the rest of that beautiful tune by Earth Gang Yo, I really wanna get into actually playing real music here Instead of me just whispering sweet nothings into y'all's ears. <laughs> but I want to play music. I think the uh, the catch is YouTube and uh, how they deal with music and copyright claims and such. They'll just take your video right down or demonetize it instantly. And not that I rely on YouTube for this podcast, I actually would prefer if y'all would listen on other platforms because you're just going to get a better experience unless uh, you pay for the premium because um, I don't I don't have any video. So what's the point? C- catch me on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you're listening to me right now. If you're not on YouTube, you know what I mean? I think I'm on Google Podcasts now, which is beautiful, but. I believe with podcasts, there's a thing called fair use with music, where if you're you're speaking about or over the song and not just letting it rock fully, if you maybe say something every 10 or so seconds, you're good money. And uh, that would be nice if I could figure that out. But I would have to do something to the audio on the YouTube page or maybe take it off YouTube or not really sure. There's a, a podcast I'm a fan of called Foamy and Buckets, Unnamed Podcast. It's uh, I was actually going to be a beautiful transition when I get there, but um, it's this dude, Mr. Foamer Simpson. He's a YouTuber. Uh, is where I found him originally. He does sneaker stuff and um, super heavy into sneakers. And like I said, this is about to come full circle really quick, but it's got a, a small diameter, I guess, because the circle will be completed soon some of these circles take the whole entire podcast to close up <laughs> but anyway they made a podcast I, they, they probably started it like two years ago or so but they just got music on it and how they're skirting around this i don't i don't think they put it on youtube i think they only have it on the podcast uh dsps and i think they're doing the well actually i know they're only doing the video version on patreon and i believe they're allowed to play music on patreon so i don't know that might be something i'd have to research into but man when you're able to play a song like if some of y'all are familiar with the joe budden podcast which thankfully they're back in business i mean not that they were ever out of business but back in regular rotation thursday or is it it's wednesdays and saturdays you know days of the week they don't even they don't even mean anything man but Get off a of schedule, y'all. Get out of that nine to five and understand that this <laughs> this whole time thing does is just kind of created to keep us in a box. But anyway, I would love to actually be able to play some music because I love music. I love talking about music. And if y'all been listening, you know I'm talking about music a lot. But yeah, I definitely recommend y'all check out This Side by Earth Gang. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful song. I love that song. It's definitely my favorite song off the Mirrorland album. I haven't got around to the Spillage Village project yet. And uh, shout out Logan for putting me on the Earth Gang. Like probably 2016 era, maybe 17. I don't know. But when he put me on, it was like, wow, these dudes is legit. Yeah, just check out their whole cat. I'm sure a lot of y'all are familiar with them. You know, now, now that they're with Dreamville. Shout out to Dreamville, shout out to Cole, shout out to Pro Era, shout out to whole Beast Coast, Flatbush Zombies. But anyway, <laughs> let me tie that circle up real quick. I told y'all I'll be a, a quick circle. Today I want to talk about 
I don't know, vaguely, but I definitely want to touch on consumerism because that bug has been biting me lately. Um, you know, consumerism, buying things that you may not need or you may need. I'm not sure the actual definition, but for me, it's like, I think of consumerism, um, not to get confused with that podcast I did a couple weeks ago on producing and consuming, although it's similar um, and it probably ties into it. What I'm speaking of here is kind of the uh, the temptation, the urge to buy something that you may not need. Like I'm not talking about food or um, gas for your car or whatever. So like that type of stuff. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like extraneous purchases like a t-shirt when you have enough t-shirts to last you the month <laughs> or like maybe a, a pair of socks that look cool like <laughs> this is hyper relevant because i just saw a thing on um instagram that i don't know if y'all seen the the socks that came out with the uh the certified lover boy merch for drake these socks are sick man and you know what i don't need I don't need socks, but I made a cart and I might spend $18. This is what I'm talking about. Consumerism, man. I love, I love, <laughs> I love like things and, uh, I guess it, it might be rooted in collectibles. Uh, you know, as a young and I had cards like Pokemon cards. That's my that was my shit, y'all. Pokemon is incredible. Um, looking back on it as an adult, it's it's some good stuff to instill into the youth. Um, I'm not sure what they're doing these days, but um, they put the Indigo League, which was like the series that I watched as a child, you know, when I was like five and six and shit. And uh, that that program is on Netflix. There was in the past couple of years that it's called the Indigo League. And I mean, the title alone, the Indigo League. <laughs> we the illest souls, children of the Indigo. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's hyper potent. Indigo, the color that represents your sixth chakra. chakra. Still, I want to get that pronunciation Um as well as I can, but your third eye, three eyes here, man. We we looking out that third eye. We looking out the truth seeking part of our body. We feeling it. We seeking the vibration that suits us. Um, and yeah, they they named the series Pokemon Indigo League. So <laughs> you know it's got some beautiful stuff in it. And if you pay attention to the episodes. They're incredible. <laughs> they speak on some really uh some really good themes and I mean Pikachu, the electricity, it's it's kinda other other dimensionally. I don't I don't know. I I, I urge y'all to check it out, but what I'm getting at is, you know, I was collecting them as a kid and the dopamine hit from opening a pack of Pokemon cards is insane man and uh <laughs> of course that spills into sports cards at least it did for me um for like the next few years after that probably up until i was like uh 12 or 13 i was getting like baseball cards basketball cards a football card here and there but it was mostly baseball and basketball and i think i still have those um in this little storage locker in the building here but Recently, I ended up uh, getting rid of my Pokemon card collection, which I, d I don't regret, but sometimes I think it would be fun to look through the cards. You know, the other night, I like want, for some reason, I just had an urge to like just Google Pokemon cards and just see what it was like. And man, if you like, there were certain ones that I just had, you know, as young as like five years old, four years old. Um, and just looking at the images of it on Google, it just brings back this beautiful childlike joy pure love emotion and that's really cool and it's something i want to explore and tap into more um because it's really it's so interesting it takes me right back to the pure love age when i didn't have so many blinders applied to me and so many belief systems applied to me and 
it's just really cool it was a really cool experiment whatever y'all were into as a kid i uh i suggest y'all do if you have physical things go check them out they might bring up some cool uh some cool feelings uh some cool energy might flow into your system but for me all i had to do was google some pokemon cards and <laughs> it did it that did it for me <laughs> but yeah so from there i mean then i was getting into sports cards um naturally just that's how my life was i played a uh, baseball and basketball so those were the kind of the two um the two cards I collected and then I stopped playing baseball in fourth grade and from there it was just basketball and that's kind of why I only care about basketball to this day because that's really all I played but um and then once I hit that the age where I wanted to start getting dressed and I always loved getting dressed I loved getting fly that was like my thing um you know I idolized the athletes the dudes I would see on MTV jams because I was like it was ESPN and MTV Jams. I remember the channels to this day. They're ingrained into my mind. 34 and 139 where I lived. You know, we had premium cable. I was blessed enough to have more options to uh, scroll through as a kid. So, you know, I know a lot of kids didn't <laughs> weren't able to go over uh, the, the double digits. But we had triple digit channels and I'm grateful for that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, 139. That was MTV Jams, and if they were on commercial, 137 was like MTV Hits or uh, something of that nature, and it also played music videos pretty much 24-7, and I always just wanted to get fresh, like these artists that I idolized, and you know, once you hit like middle school, you really get more control over uh, what you want to wear and what you want to get, and then when you hit high school, you really get into it, you know, it's, it's a, at least for me, that was important. I loved getting fly, getting fresh, and it went as far as I got, you know, I got fake J's, I'm not ashamed to admit it, um, in like that eighth, ninth grade area, you know, straight from China, $30 for Raging Bull 5s. <laughs> My Jordan has know what those look like. Those, they, they're going to cost you at least like 500 maybe a band for a fresh pair these days. But yeah, <laughs> for $30, I had them shipped straight from China. <laughs> and I don't regret that one bit because then once I got my own money, ooh, let me tie this in real quick. My first, my own money, my first thing I actually spent real money on, my first real paycheck, 16 years old. Jordan 7s, Cardinal 7s. This is episode 7 of the Bobby Keith Podcast. Wishing you peace, love, and positivity. Welcome to my vibration. As I told you, I'm all mellowed out. We having fun on this side. A whole lot of love on this side. You feel me? So, yeah. And from that moment, from getting that pair of Cardinal 7s, man, uh, that was it. <laughs> Whenever I had extra... Excuse me. Whenever <laughs> Human, not man. I'm, try, I'm really trying to work on that, saying human. Um... But yeah, from that moment on, human, alien, shout out to my aliens. If I had extra bread, man, it was going, <laughs> look how look how easy it slips into my lexicon. It's just a part of it. Working on it. I'm working on it, fam. Um, if I had some extra bread laying around, I was getting J's. I was getting the fresh clothes. There was a spot uh in Nashua, which is like, it was like a 20 minute drive that had, there was a store, it was called Persona. Shout out to Max Oak Cream. He's all about that Persona, but, uh, <laughs> you know, the Persona, um, also shout out Ralph Smart, Infinite Waters talks about the Persona. That's the mask that we wear as spirits. That's what we were assigned. This is our Persona. This is our character for those of y'all that see the same character over and over again when you see people you can oh he's that guy he's like that guy and uh yeah persona i would get fresh there if i had extra money i was buying a 50 dollars t-shirt and nobody understood you know what i mean there was a couple kids who was getting it who was doing it but uh yeah man and then the collection kept growing and growing and eventually i had like damn near 40 pairs of J's and fresh kicks not all J's I probably had it was over like 20 something Jordans and 
the Nikes. I got into the runners. Shout out my boy Eric. He got me into runners heavy. So I was getting the Saucony's, the Asics. And this was when uh, Kith was popping off super heavy. So although I had the uh, the Sage Gel Light Fives, those were crazy. And then, you know, my consumerism just kept going and going and going until my whole veganism switched and uh, got rid of the collection. And now, I guess it's kind of a blessing, right, uh, in disguise, because there's not a lot of kicks I can really splurge on. But, yo, these past couple of weeks, there's been there's been vegan stuff popping up here and there. And just like, damn, am I going to buy it? Am I going to be a consumer like that? And I fight the urge. I still get shirts and stuff. Uh, my two favorite, I'll give you all this. Um, I, the only places I really buy clothing from are the Flatbush Zombies merch store. <laughs> it's the best merch in this universe. They're uh, Grateful Dead 2.0 as far as merch goes. Most prolific, and that's a fact. Spend money there, and I spend money with Juice at Talking Terps. Only have one product from them, but... I'm always trying to get get this stuff. It's so fresh. Um, and Joe Freshka is Dope Boy Magic, uh, Don't Be Mad, Fat Tiger Works, the whole collective. That's where I spend my money. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, man, it's, it's tough. It's tough. I'm always battling this thing because this is something that, I don't know. It, it's not, it, it, it brings me certain, it brings me joy to, uh, to feel fresh, to to look good, you know what I mean, and that's a that's an interesting thing, right? Because as we keep learning and as and progressing as humans, aliens, spirits, whatever you want to call yourself, um, you know, we kind of detach. You know, you see the the most spiritually gifted, the most spiritually enlightened, just in some cloth, in some linen, or maybe even nothing, just sitting there, just flesh, and just at one with the world. Um, and you know I'm a man of balance. Y'all know that. So it's, it's that four seven balance word to cap steez. I'm just balancing. That's what I'm doing, man. And human. So for me, I guess it's a. I'm, I might be in Birkenstocks with a fresh fit up top. So I, I might be barefoot, and I might have a Supreme hat or something on. I don't know. You never know. It's about balance. So. I've kind of come to peace with the fact that I can in- allow myself to indulge in this type of consumerism, you know, with fashion and uh, sneakers and such. Um, but it's just about being smart with it, you know. If you don't need a T-shirt, that's <laughs> that's what I keep running into. It's like, you know, I don't need any T-shirts. I need some pants that fit me correctly. <laughs> So, you know, I I, uh, I actually was able to accomplish that mission. I went to Urban Outfitters and got a couple pairs of pants and they fit great and they, they feel great. You know what I mean? So um, it's that type of stuff. It's that type of stuff. I believe that balance is important and it's it's important to allow yourself to engage in stuff that does bring you joy and makes you happy. You know what I mean? So, you know, we try to be as at least myself, I try to be as spiritual and as uh as connected to this higher power as i can be and to keep growing as a spirit as a soul as a human as an alien just as a being you know what i mean i keep trying to grow grow with this enlightenment and understand how to be greater not even greater just to exist more peacefully and exude more positivity and love and I think it's important to allow yourself to engage in stuff that you like. So um, for me, you know, I I think that <laughs> I think I'm going to get some sneakers at some point in the future. You know what I mean? Uh, there's some stuff on my end there's some, for my sneakerheads. Let me give you some game real quick. Space Hippie 4s. They're sitting. They're sitting in Nike and they are stupid crazy man they're stupid crazy made out of recycled materials completely vegan shout out to all my vegans plant-based people was happening space hippie fours are crazy fresh and i might indulge in that i might indulge in nike by you now you can create 
Air Force Ones that are vegan. You can make it with this cool cloth material recycled and just really cool. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do on that front. Um, and also Jaden Smith's dropping vegan sneakers all the time. These things are crazy. I don't know if y'all seen them. They're called the New Balance Vision Racer Surplus. And the surplus is they're made uh, from surplus materials at New Balance. So he's kind of engaging in that that vegan, that ethical thinking. Um, and those are crazy if y'all haven't seen them. And they're vegan. I think almost everything he does is vegan. I don't know if he is personally. I'm not too tapped into the young man's uh, mind, but... It's fresh as hell, and those sneakers go crazy. Um, and uh, again, check them out. I feel I'm like six one, uh, and tall sneakers make me taller. <laughs> That's why I kind of stay in Burks, so I kind of stay grounded with that six six one, you know, that area. But his sneakers is gonna make me feel like I'm in the NBA. I'll probably be six three in them. <laughs> the platform on those is crazy. So uh, anyway, those are sick, and. Uh, New Balance is having a crazy year. I don't know if y'all been paying attention like that, but obviously Joe came in with the hitter All Star Weekend. Those I think they're nine nine twos, and those are beautiful, man. Um, and then Salehi just came out with his. Um, I have no words. They're beautiful. They're incredible. I wish I could. Uh, that see that that's where the veganism is friendly for me because I can't actually indulge in them because they're not even a vegan a vegan sneakers so it's like my pool is smaller so it's easier for me to make decisions uh, <laughs> and it's easier for me to try to obtain uh, like off white like the Virgil fives those are vegan um, I don't know if that was purposeful or what but yeah they're vegan so. I don't know if I would keep the white pair to keep it funky with you. I will probably flip them and get all the other shoes I just listed if I'm able to obtain them. But it's like I have this skill set because I was wheeling and dealing with sneakers for so long. You know what I mean? Uh, I know how to obtain and flip a sneaker. So but I don't allow myself to engage in it if it's not vegan. So I don't know. I just have these weird morals I put on myself. But Hell yeah, I'm trying to get those Virgils this week and I'm trying to flip them and get all those other shoes I just listed because <laughs> I could get them all with one pair of Virgils. <laughs> and word to Virgil, I hope y'all checked out that post I was talking about last week. And a word, let's connect this here. I don't know if y'all tuned into uh, this Kanye West Joe Rogan interview. I know those are some controversial names for some of y'all, but you got to hear people out, you feel me? I've been saying this this whole past, like, whatever. Five, I mean, I guess people have been calling Kanye out of pocket for a long time now. But if you really listen to the man, he's he's about it. Now, I ain't listened to his music since Pablo, but that's a different story. That's a completely different story. His ideas um, outside, you got to pick and choose because, you know, he's anti-abortion right now, which is kind of crazy. Like, like, yo, <laughs> his reasoning was interesting. I hadn't heard... Uh, his reasoning before it was interesting but it's not enough like her body her choice that's a situation where you can say man like yo you gotta back up on that one back off that one you know you can't throw on a MAGA hat what is you doing fam what is you doing I don't I, don't, I still don't get that one he didn't really explain that uh <laughs> but a lot of his other ideas incredible and if you replace the word God, every time he said God in that Joe Rogan interview, if you if you go listen to that, replace the word God with higher power or higher self. And it's like, oh, he really tapped in, <laughs> but he just his uh his channeling is done through the the figurehead of God, the Christian, uh, the Christian one. And I always find that one interesting or. Anytime we put a gender on a God, that's a big thing for me. Like, it's always like, he is so gracious. He is like, what? That always confused me. Uh, it's like, why not it? <laughs> Do you really think this higher power has a gender? That's crazy. I, I don't know. If anything, if we have to put a gender on it, you know it's a female. <laughs> they're the only ones that create anything here. Now, obviously, there's the argument that it takes both. So that's why I say it's not, uh, there's no gender on it, period. 
the higher self, the higher power is genderless. Um, that's where I'm at. So, yeah, anyway, that interview, if you replace God with <laughs> a higher self, higher power. Uh, but that's that's something that kind of bugs me, man, like a human. Uh, when we, if we call God or any form of higher power, if we put a gender on it, that's kind of wild. Like, y'all really think? that the higher power the higher self has a gender y'all really think that duality exists on a higher plane y'all gonna have to convince me on that one because i don't know the higher planes i've seen there is no duality it is just one it is love it is all one it's all encompassing is all of us it's this whole universe it's just one but yeah, anyway, a lot of the ideas the man was spinning, that man being yay, he was talking that shit, yo, for real, like, talking about A to Z produce, like, the, every meal on your plate, A to Z, all created inside this one place. I love that. I love that. Let's get away from factory farming, factory farming in general not just animals but also plants let's grow a biodiverse crop uh arrangement <laughs> if that's a way to say it and let's create what we can in the space we can and make something beautiful out of it uh, i love that i love the way he was talking about reforming education and teach him what's necessary. Let's get this handle on physics. Because that's kind of what we're working with here. But let's also get the handle on metaphysics. I think that's the... Uh, that's this beautiful, this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful saying I heard on one Duncan podcast. Duncan podcast. Duncan Trussell podcast episode. I forget the, the beautiful soul he was interviewing. But... They were talking about how science and spirituality are the same coin, but the heads and tails. And if you're on the heads side of a coin, you never even see the tail side of the coin. So you don't even consider it a thing, but it's all the same piece of matter. It's all the same. It's just different ways of looking at it and approaching it. But the funny thing is that everybody on the spirituality side seems to write off a lot of stuff on the science side. And everybody on the science side won't even hear a word a spiritual person has to say. And I think that's wild. I think it, they're kind of the same thing. They are the same thing. Uh, it's metaphysics. <laughs> it's the physics of physics. It's what's going on inside of it. You know what I'm saying? This is that real deal Holyfield funky shit right here. You know what I mean? Like, I'm talking, this is what we should be learning. We should be learning the ins and outs of this whole system and what we know about it so far and the beautiful sacred geometry and seeing it through the metaphysical and the physical lens. Anyway, apart from that, there was some beauty. I really recommend this podcast. I know I know a lot of people um, have holdups with both of these characters. Um and that was one thing I was just speaking on that they, they touched on. Like a lot of uh, people you see are the same character. And those are definitely two unique characters that I don't think they also exist in this world, at least in our lifetimes and in recent memory. Um, and that's what I think we should all strive to be. Be you. You are unique. You are different. Be you. Do not allow yourself to fit in a box. Be outside of a box. And that was another thing that was touched on. Home design. This is something I'm big on because I love design in general. I think design is one of my greatest strengths as a human in every aspect. Home design. You know what I love? I love this. Uh, there's a show on Netflix about like the most, uh, like the best home architecture in the world. And they go around to different countries. And my favorite ones are always the ones that are just kind of placed into nature. They're not tearing apart nature to create the homes they're placing a home in nature and just allowing it to exist with nature to flow 
And that's one thing Ye was talking about with home design. Like it should just be flowing. It should not be a box. A box is created to keep us inside of said box. Get out of the box. We are all made to be outside of the box, outside of the matrix, outside of whatever system of thought has been placed upon you like a box. So get out of that box. You know what I'm saying? And I think home design is kind of crucial in that. If I was able to build scratch up, I would find a beautiful piece of nature and kind of create a home around it, not have nature go around the home. And uh, he touched on that. I thought that was sick. Oh, another beautiful piece of information I had never even connected. Um, He was talking about how now if you Google Black Panther, it's only the movie. The party is erased from history. <laughs> Not erased, but you have to look much harder to find information about the Black Panther Party. You're not getting Fred Hampton and Bobby Seale when you search Black Panther, and you know it's it, it's the be- it's a it's a tricky conversation, right? Because obviously you love seeing Black Panther as the Marvel movie, but the information of the party is definitely more important in seeing that. So I don't know, he touched on that and that was crazy. Uh, I never thought about that. And he was also talking about, I'm not familiar with the movie Maleficent, I believe he was saying, but they said her people were the Moors. And if you know anything about the Moors, that them doing that in that movie is insane, changing the frequency of what you remember the Moors as. Because do your research on the Moors, but the Moors were here before... (laughs) whatever type of modern civilization you think is here now so i don't know just do do a little research on it it's a fascinating deep dive um to learn about the moorish history and the the uh what actually (laughs) the migration (laughs) whatever you want to call it but learn a little bit about the moors man it's beautiful information yeah was talking about that um he was also talking about fluoride, man. He was talking about fluoride. You know, I'm big on that anti-fluoride. I mean, I even made hoodies <laughs> like four years ago with uh, flor- the word fluoride in a big, uh, a big uh, circle with a cross, like a uh, like a no fluoride. That's it. That's what it says when you see it. But um, yeah, man, there was a lot of real shit being spoken in that interview and. Um, I don't know. I think it's worth a listen. It's, it was, I was listening to it while I was uh, door dashing the other day, and it's it's beautiful information. And I think we should uh, listen. You know what I mean? Uh, and I don't know. I don't think that I don't think it's an issue for. I don't know. I'm a white male. A lot of the super progressive people are like, you can't even listen to. Uh, to anything yay or Rogan has to say because they did X, Y, Z. But like I said in earlier episodes, if you look hard enough, you're going to find something negative and everything. So, um, and that's how I opened the talk on yay. I was doing all these pre qualifiers. Um, but I don't know. I think that was a good interview. And it also ties into consumerism because that man has <laughs> one of the largest brands on the universe right now um, with Yeezy. And with uh, this Gap partnership, and they haven't even created anything with that yet. But, yeah, that was an interesting interview. Definitely check that out. Um, Definitely check that out. So I guess that kind of naturally slides into music area, I guess, because, I don't know, Kanye, consumer music. uh, But, yeah. (laughs) I've been jamming lately to... Shuffle. That's my friend. I love Shuffle. Shuffle through all the songs. You know what I mean? I, I didn't think I I don't think I consumed a uh, a full length project this week. Like I said, I wanna get to Spillage Village. I think that was like a couple weeks ago at this point. Um I wanna get to the Ty Dollar sign. Oh sh- yo. Y'all got it. There's a there's a program on Netflix. Um it's called like Music Explorer or something, something to that extent. But uh, there's like a 30 minute documentary on the creation of LA. Can you believe we found love in the city of LA? LA. That opening track from Free TC. 
What a good album that is. That's an incredible album. I was super r and beat out during that time, and that album was, like, perfect. And it replays incredibly. It replays incredibly well. And uh, we actually were just jamming to it this morning. This morning, it's Tall's vacation. She finally on vacation. Shout out to my hardworking fiancé, Twin Flame, beautiful everything, everything. And uh, she finally on vacation. It's Monday. It's a rainy Monday, but there's this spot. We're down in southern New Hampshire. There's a spot an hour away. It's called Kittery, Maine, which is like the first uh, town over the border in Maine. And they got something called Lovebirds Donuts. And uh, let's just say this might be our greatest vice <laughs> in the known universe is these dang donuts. They are unreal. And what I love about this shop is they are completely vegan, completely plant-based. But you know what they don't do? They don't advertise that whatsoever. So... There's average Joe walking in getting a getting a crazy donut. Like for instance, they have a uh, a maple toasted coconut, which is kind of replicating a maple bacon donut. But wow, is that it was so good. They got uh, all sorts of beautiful stuff. I had an apple cider donut, and that was insane. You know, it's that time of the year. We got leaves falling. It's autumn. Um, insane and. Yo, if y'all are in the New England area or plan to be in the New England area, you gotta check that spot out. Like, as far as veganism goes, it's kind of weak up here. I'm not even gonna lie to you, for real, for real. So, as far as uh, fully vegan establishments, this is the best one for, like, sweets and treats. You know what I mean? Uh, Lovebirds Donuts. Shout out to y'all. We picked up a heavy packet of donuts this morning. But anyway, on the ride back, I threw on that LA because I had seen that uh, that song song Explorer. I don't know what it's called, but if you search like Ty Dolla on Netflix, that's going to pop up. But um, as that song was on, Tall was like, I feel like Kendrick's due for an album. And I'm like, yeah, me too. So I don't know when Kendrick dropping it. Probably, I don't know. He might wait till next year. Who knows? Who knows? And you know, it's Kendrick. He don't need to drop. Whenever he, he could drop in, he could do some D'Angelo shit <laughs> and wait decade. <laughs> but, uh, and it would still be incredible. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely recommend uh, tuning into that. I want to get to that feature in Ty Dolla album. I didn't get to that yet, but... Uh, I'll get to that eventually. Um, And yeah, I think with music, it's really cool. Oh, let's full circle this. I saw, so I don't know why, but for some reason in my life, I've been surrounded by musicians adjacently, somehow, some way. Like, um, I don't know. I just always knew some people who were making music from young, especially in college. I had or have multiple friends who are like doing music and I think that's so cool but I heard uh this dude Philly I work with him at Chipotle and we're uh friends or whatever and he posted this song (laughs) and it's good man and I love hearing people making good music so check this check this song out it's by Phil uh I think he the name of his artist name is fns.philly and it's called Don't Shoot. And that was a really good track. And shout out to Aso Black, another artist I was friends with. Still in front, you know what I mean? But um, in college times, I was close and makes incredible music for a living. Shout out to PJ. He put out a song. Another kid from college making music. And uh, shout out to David Smitty, Kid Smith from high school making music. It's just so beautiful to see, you know what I mean? And there's all at least I'm, I'm probably forgetting. Oh, Raekwon! Shout out to Raekwon, making music um, down in Carolina now. You know what I mean? It's just so cool. To, another kid from Chipotle, two kids from Chipotle. I was friends with making music, creative man. Um, you always find the creatives. If we're just doing some random job, like at Trader Joe's, I worked with uh, just like a lot. <laughs> I can't even put a number on the amount of talented artists. Um, it's just it you always see your creatives we're always out here and shout out to all my creators and creatives and just create some you know what i'm saying but yeah definitely check out the music from all those artists i listed above or before or whatever um 
but yeah that don't shoot track is super hard man um and i i think it's on apple music and i just had started listening to it over there i got a 30 day free trial of apple music right now i know uh i know y'all know my thoughts on uh streaming and i'm i'm mr hard file so i'll probably buy that single uh eventually um but yeah i buy i need my files if it's a like a young artist um or a excuse me or an associate friend or whatever i'm i'm gonna buy that support like that um but yeah i need hard i need hard copies so whenever i get offered a free trial i'm taking it i'm taking it and running <laughs> like with apple music right now i probably got like a couple weeks left of that but yeah definitely definitely tune into that tune into a so black uh black ocean season zero like, woo! um crazy record black ocean uh season zero or season one i forget my apologies um if it's if it's either or but yeah man it's really cool just seeing people you know making music and that's really it's just really cool and i'm sure well i don't know that might be hyper egotistical but i'm sure people think it's cool that i'm doing something too creative that you can tune into so I think that's fun. I encourage everybody to do something. What you want to do, do it. Feel me? Um, but yeah, like I said, uh, not a not a lot of on the, on the music tip I indulged in this past week. Um, mostly shuffle. Definitely mostly shuffle. I think I I went back to Savage Mode too, which I didn't know if I would, but I did. So I guess that album um, has some replay value because I went back to it again this week. Uh, I think I did play through the whole thing. So that that was the only album I played in full this past week. Um, and I guess it's holding up because I did. I played through. But yeah, a lot of shuffle. Uh, that Tribe Called Quest album from 2016 just... Doo, 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 doo. Oh, man. What a good album. Straight up. Like, what a good album. And uh, that was getting some run. The Weekend single that... Doo, 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 doo. What a good song. That's just a straight up good song. Um and I think that's everywhere. Everybody knows that one. That's just a good record. And I think I'm just appreciating good records more. And that that's definitely a lot to do with Tall. Cause you know me, I was straight hip hop R and beat out, but uh Tall has introduced me to a lot of just like other types of music. Um so I just appreciate a good song for being a good song, like from uh like indie to like uh like old rock stuff to like the beatles and that type of shit like learn to appreciate it you know what i mean um and i think that's important that we all bright brighten broaden our scope because it just happened today that's how i got on the uh that tribe record um we got it from here uh that a song came on in tall shuffle um by 311 or 311 i'm not sure how they pronounce their band but uh and they had the beginning of that song sounded exactly like one of those songs on the tribe album and i just uh, i love picking those things up like oh who sampled who that type of thing and it's really fun as you brought in your uh music scope um, i'm sure a lot of y'all already have an incredibly broad music scope but for me it's 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 a process getting into other stuff but uh yeah, and as far as uh, shows and stuff, we're still watching Weeds. Um, definitely recommend. And I, I don't know why it's like a it's like a a thing out there in the atmosphere that the show is like not good after the first like two or one or two or three whatever seasons. But I think it's is really good all the way through. It's super interesting. There's always something new happening. Um, I mean, we noticed like one or two plot holes here and there, but. Uh, I don't know. I still think it's really good. And we're on season seven now, which I think is the last season. Um, I'm pretty sure it's seven seasons. But uh, yeah, man, it's super good. It holds up all the way through. Um, I'll give more in depth whenever we finish the show. But I think that might be the only major thing I was watching this week. Uh, that that uh, L.A. episode of that Netflix show for sure. Um, <laughs> I want to watch Emily in Paris, as funny as that sounds, but yeah, if you listen to Joe Budden podcast, you know, Maul recommended that. <laughs> I think that everybody thought that was hilarious, but I don't know. That's enough of a recommendation for me. It's just like, uh, and I love Paris. You know what I mean? Uh, we had a great time in Paris. We were just talking about the, uh, the hot street wine 
and a friend that we met in Paris just messaged us this morning so it's kind of a full circle thing so we'll probably get into that show soon um but yeah that might be it y'all uh I appreciate y'all for tuning in I want you to uh to just exist in love and uh you know, when I give advice, it's advice for myself also because, you know, the person giving advice always needs the advice the most. And I think that's true for everybody. Um, so, yeah, uh, I love y'all. Thank you for tuning in. Episode seven. How crazy is that, KD? I, I think I don't know how many of y'all have noticed what I've been doing with the uh, the Insta stuff. I'm putting I'm highlighting the Jordan for the episode and I'm highlighting a, a crazy elite player who wore that number so i think this week we doing cardinal sevens maybe a pair of the uh the uh charcoal sevens uh and probably probably kd in a nets uniform you feel me <laughs> who, who else got that seven you got mike vick uh i was definitely into vick back in the day uh i definitely had the the red falcons jersey in that like 06 era 05 era even uh four even i think four was his madden cover year right so i probably had it back then um you know my mom always blessed me up this is a full circle here for the consumerism but she would always bless me up with the jersey she was an ebay og you feel me like she would look on ebay for my size in the pre-owned or maybe the the new with defects you know what i'm saying but she would get that deal that steal you know what i mean she would get that jersey for like eleven dollars and 22 cents you feel me <laughs> so i was i have not jerseyed out i have a box of jerseys from childhood that i'm holding on to for my little tykes when they grow up and when they get born i mean i don't have any kids yet but uh whenever that happens i got jerseys for them and i want to start collecting some vegan kicks for them you feel me um but yeah that ties it up y'all let me know how y'all feel about consumerism, how y'all deal with it. I think it's a tricky balance, but I think it's a balance that we can all exist in. I think we're allowed to, you know, consume and purchase some things that make us happy. But uh, I don't think it's it's that bad if you do it, but maybe just find your own personal balance. So, yeah, that that's it, y'all. Love y'all. Thank you for tuning in. Peace, love, happiness, positivity, love. Spread it. Woo!